As you can see, I'm in a different location today. This is my apprentice Brad, and today we're going to go through all the steps to stuff a squirrel. This is going to be his first taxidermy project. He hasn't even done much sewing before, so we're going to see if you can do some sewing. So are you excited to be starting your first project? I'm very excited. Alright then, we're going to begin. We have all the supplies here. And there's going to be a list in the description of everything that you're going to need to stuff a squirrel. This is going to be a step-by-step, -step, so hopefully we'll be going slow enough that you'll be able to follow at home and do your own squirrel. Okay, first step in doing the taxidermy is to wash our specimen. This is our little squirrel here. The squirrel's been in my freezer for four years now. And as you can see here, there is a gunshot. It goes clean through. My sister shot this squirrel. She is a ruthless squirrel killer. She hates squirrels. And she gets upset when they're near her bird feeder. So this was one of her many victims. So first step is to shampoo the squirrel. That helps remove any dirt that's on the squirrel. And also gives you a nice clean slate to work with. So this is going to get pretty messy. I'm going to put my gloves on. Yes, you always have to be sanitary. Yeah. Of course, with my hands being a bit damp, the gloves do not want to go on. I have to have safety with everything. Yes. <laughs> Don't I know it? Okay, so now that it took me 10 years to get my gloves. <laughs> and we will be wiping the counter down with antibacterial stuff. I always just use shampoo or body wash. This here is a mixture of both. It doesn't really matter what kind you use. You could use antibacterial if you wanted to, but it's not really that necessary. Okay, so no different kind of shampoo will affect the uh, fur or skin in any different way? Not that I'm aware of, but if you're, if you have a shampoo that has a pigment in it, because you're selling like for blondes or redheads or brunettes, some shampoos are formulated specifically for that type of hair, and it will have a bit of a dye in it. Okay. It's probably best to stay away from those ones, just because it might tint the hair. If you're working on a dark animal, it doesn't matter, but if you're working on a white weasel or something like that, then to use shampoo that's formulated for tinting a brunette's hair a bit darker, you might get a bit of a stain on that. And now that our squirrel's thawed out, we can see that this little one appears to be a male. But we'll find out more when we dissect them. Because when they're this young, it's a little harder to tell if they're male or not. Because rodents are very close gender-wise from their outside characteristics until the males mature. And then it's very obvious that a squirrel is a male. Oh, a squirrel's on? Yes. <laughs> to put it mildly. Okay, so now it's time to rinse this little one. Do we have to let them dry? Nope. Before we... No? No, we don't have to let them dry. We just have to pat down most of the moisture. Okay. Because when the fur is wet, it also helps it separate a little bit. So when you separate the hair to make the incision, it's a cleaner line. That is very smart. Alright, 
and so our little munchkin is all shampooed and ready to go. This would have been one of my squirrel's relatives. Yay. Well, the, um, the one that I stuffed, this may be one of her children. Mm -hmm. 